Do you have any tips on how to improve memory? Yes, okay, this is a wild literature and I love it and it's changing the way that I do things. I thought that to remember things, you're supposed to get really, really excited, really focused and remember them. And guess what? That's not how you do it. There are data and there are stories going back to medieval times that they used to teach kids things and then throw them in the river. There's a beautiful annual review of neuroscience written by the late James McGaw, a brilliant researcher who taught me that in this review. And it turns out that if you want to remember something, you want to spike adrenaline after you acquired that information, after. That means the double espresso and the ice bath after you study for math, immediately after. And you think about this, you know, that makes perfect sense, right? Think about the one trial learning that nobody wants to experience, which is a car accident or some traumatic thing. You didn't get the spike of adrenaline first, you got the spike of adrenaline after. So again, you know, I discourage the use of excessive stimulants or you know, anything like that, but if you're going to try and remember information, you need to get your brain and body into a high autonomic arousal state. Literally, you need to deploy adrenaline into your system after you have made the attempt to learn some information. So that's how I would focus on remembering things better. And it's also true that if you tell yourself that something's really important to you, you'll, you'll be able to learn it better. If you meet people and they tell you their name and you forget two seconds later, well, you should probably be thinking, and now I do this, I meet people and I think, okay, what, what terrible thing did this person do? Just try and spike my adrenaline or something like that. It's a terrible trick, but I haven't figured out a better way. But that's actually one that data supported way to do that. Um, uh, easily a dozen or more studies in humans on that very topic. Now this might seem immensely simple, but it raises this really interesting question, which we talked about before, which is why do we remember certain things and not others? Because according to what I've just said, as you go through life, you're experiencing things all the time. You're constantly being bombarded with sensory stimuli. Some of those sensory stimuli you perceive and only some of those perceptions get stamped down as memories. Today, I'm gonna teach you how certain things get stamped down as memories. And I'm going to teach you how to leverage that process in order to remember the information that you want far better. Emotion itself turns out to be the way in which we can enhance memories, even if those are memories for things that are not funny, are not intensely sad, are not immensely happy, or don't evoke a really strong emotional response or even any remote emotional response. And the reason for that is that emotions just like perception, just like sensation, are the consequence of particular neurochemicals being present in our brain and body. And as I'm going to tell you next, there are particular neurochemicals that you can leverage in order to learn specific information faster and to remember it for a much longer period of time, maybe even forever. And you can do that by leveraging the relationship in your nervous system between your brain and your body and your body back to your brain. So let's talk about tools for enhancing memory. Repetition works, but the problem for most people is that they either don't have the patience, they don't have the time, and sometimes they literally don't have the time because they've got a deadline on something that they're trying to remember and learn, or they simply would like to be able to remember things better in general, remember them more quickly. This process of accelerating repetition-based learning so that your learning curve doesn't go from having to perform something a thousand times and then gradually over time it's a thousand, 750 times a day, 500 times a day, 300 times a day and down to no repetitions, right? You can just perform that thing the first time and every time. Well, there is a way to shift that curve so that you can essentially establish stronger connections between the neurons that are involved in generating that memory or behavior more quickly. How do you do that? Well, in order to answer that, we have to look at the beautiful work of James McGaw and Larry Cahill. And what they found is that it is the emotionality evoked by an experience, or to be more precise, it is the emotional state that you are in after you experience something that dictates whether or not you will learn it quickly or not. This is absolutely important in terms of thinking about tools to improve your memory. What McGaw and Cahill really showed and what's most important to know is that it is the 
presence of high adrenaline, high amounts of norepinephrine and epinephrine, and perhaps cortisol as well, as you'll soon see, that allows a memory to be stamped down quickly. The ideal protocol would be focus on the thing you're trying to learn very intensely, still try and get excellent sleep. Again, fundamentally important for mental health, physical health, and performance. And we can now extend from performance to saying, including learning and memory. Nap, if it doesn't interrupt your nighttime sleep, naps of anywhere from 10 to 90 minutes or non-sleep deep rest protocols will enhance learning and memory. But we can now add to that, that spiking adrenaline, provided it can be done in a safe way, is going to reduce the number of repetitions required to learn. And that should be done at the very tail end or immediately after a learning bout, which is compatible with all the other protocols that I mentioned. You want to spike adrenaline afterwards. And so what I'm telling you is you can do that with caffeine. You can do that with alpha GPC. You can do that with a combination of caffeine and alpha GPC. If you can do that safely, some of you I know are using other forms of pharmacology. I did a long episode all about ADHD. I have to just really declare my stance very clearly that I am not a fan. I am actually opposed to people using prescription drugs who are not prescribed those drugs. So that's pharmacology. But as I've mentioned, there are the behavioral protocols. You can use cold and cold is an excellent stimulus because first of all, it doesn't involve pharmacology. Second of all, you can generally access it at low to zero cost, especially the cold shower approach. And third, you can titrate it. You can start with warmer water. You can make it very, very cold if that's your thing and you're able to tolerate that safely. You can make it moderately cold. How cold should it be in order to evoke adrenaline release? Well, it should be uncomfortably cold, but cold enough that you feel like you really want to get out, but can stay in safely. That's going to evoke adrenaline release. If it quickens your breathing, if it makes you go wide-eyed, that's increasing adrenaline release. In fact, those effects of going wide-eyed and quickening of the breathing and the challenges in thinking clearly, those are the direct effects of adrenaline on your brain and body. And of course, there are other ways to increase adrenaline. You could go out for a hard run. You could do any number of things that would increase adrenaline in your body. Which things you choose is up to you. But from a very clear, solid grounding in research data, we can confidently say that spiking adrenaline after interacting with some material, physical or cognitive material that you're trying to learn is going to be the best time to spike that adrenaline. The overall takeaway is that anything that increases adrenaline will increase learning and memory and will reduce the number of repetitions required to learn something, regardless of whether or not that something has an emotional intensity or not. Provided that that spike in adrenaline occurs late in the learning or immediately after. And anything that reduces epinephrine and adrenaline will impair learning. And that's the key and novel piece of information that I'm adding now, which is if you're trying to learn something and it's not evoking much of an emotional response and you're not using any pharmacology or other methods to enhance adrenaline release after learning that thing, well, you're not going to learn it very well. 